Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side scroller series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with our project and we have got something quite interesting for you. So if I go ahead and run into this exploding rock that you see I've got there, you can see it takes a little bit of the player's health away. Or if I go into the fire, when it takes some health away, we've got this really cool looking red vignette effect. So let me go ahead and show you that again. So if I run up to my fire, and if I go and stand in it, you can see the screen goes red and it fades away after a couple of seconds. If I go back into the fire, it does it again. It looks really, really cool. And that's what we're going to be focusing on creating in today's video. Now, there is lots of stuff for this system that we need to set up. And we're going to be making this system in a way that's a little bit modular so that we can apply it to pretty much any way that we want to take away the player's health. Whether that's going to be enemies shooting the player, um, running into fire, exploding rocks, doing whatever you guys are got to do we're going to be setting up a function to make it really really simple and really easy to use so without further ado let's go ahead and get started so the first thing that you guys are going to need to do is you're going to need to actually import the image that i've used for that vignette effect so let me go ahead and show you the file if you haven't got it already please go ahead and download it in the download link in the description and you can find it in the project folder it's just called red vignette for now once you have got that we need to import it into the engine so i'm going to go ahead and quickly delete the old stuff that i've got already and then we are good to go so if you want to edit if you want to import it into the engine it is quite simple just go ahead and grab the file and then just drag it into the content browser just like that straight into the folder with everything else we're going to go ahead and rename this and i'm just going to call this vignette effect for now and that is it once we've done that we actually need to create a blueprint that's going to contain this image the animation and all of the script to set this up so if we go ahead and create this right click in your content browser and go to user interface and create a widget blueprint for now i'm going to call this um, player health vignette once you've done that we need to go ahead and open it up and import in the image so give that a couple of seconds to load and we'll get started so inside of here, go over to your palette and drag in an image and then just make it nice and big. The easiest way to do it to ensure you're going to fit the whole screen is to go over to your details panel and on the X and Y we need to change this so it's the size of a normal monitor. So 1920 for the X uh, and then for the Y we need to set this to 1080 so it's 1920 by 1080 p once we've done that, we need to drag it into the center. You can sort of guess it, or if you wanted to, just set position X and position Y down to zero. And then for the anchor point, we're going to anchor this to the whole size of the screen. So that way we can guarantee it's going to cover the whole player's screen regardless of their resolution. Once we've done that, we actually need to make it look a bit more like this red vignette. So go down to appearance, brush, and under image, let's just go ahead and type in vignette effect and set that and that is perfect and that is looking good so the next thing that we need to do now then guys is we need to make sure we set the default color and opacity down to zero now some of you guys are probably going to be a little bit confused as to why we're doing that it's because we're going to be setting up an animation to make it fade in and then fade out if we have the default and the default opacity down to zero it's just going to stop some clipping and other bits so Let's just leave it at that and let's go ahead and create the animation to make it fade in and out. It's quite simple. So firstly, before I do that, in the details panel for my image that I've still got selected, I'm going to change the name of this to vignette for now. Once we've done that, go to the animations panel in the bottom left, press the little green icon to create the new animation and just call this fade for now. Once you've done it, select it and under the timeline, add, uh, add vignette onto the track. And with this, we need to create a color and opacity track. The color and opacity track is pretty much going to allow us to change the visibility, going from zero at zero seconds to one after a couple of seconds and then fade it in and out. You'll see exactly what I'm doing in a second. So if I go ahead and create this color and opacity track that I've got here, if we move it over to the one second on the timeline and then change the opacity here down to one, it's going to create me a keyframe and it's going to fade it from zero opacity to one opacity. And if I drag this little slider here, you can see that going quite nice. Now I need this to fade off of the player's screen as well. So I need to go to two seconds and I need to set the opacity back down to zero. And if I go all the way to the beginning now, 
if I press play, we get this nice little flash, this nice little fade, and that is perfect. So going over to the graph, one other thing that we do need to do for this animation is we pretty much need to tell it to play this animation as soon as it begins to create this widget. So from event construct, drag this out and tell it to play animation and just select that. And then for in animation, that's the only bit that you need to change here. Grab fade, get a reference to it and hook it up just like that. Now you guys can slow it down, speed it up a little bit using playback speed, um, but sort of a setup that I've got here for now, so it really does work quite well for me. So I'm gonna compile this and I'm gonna leave that. So the next thing that I need to do now is I actually need to find and create a way for us to tell the engine to put that vignette effect on the screen. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a function which is going to be putting it onto the screen. So if you guys remember in a couple of videos ago I actually created a function whereby when the player's health drops below zero it's going to drop them down to the ground and they're going to die which was quite nice and I can just pretty much cast to that and then tell it to do it from pretty much anywhere. So Having said that, we're going to create another function. Ignore that little delete action that I did there. That's got nothing to do with it. So that function is going to be inside of the side scroller character. And we need to create one of those. So if you're just in the normal event graph, what we're going to do is I've got one here already. Ignore that. And I'm going to create a new function. So you can see I've got def already. Just go ahead and create a new function. And we're going to give this the name um, damage player. Once we've done that, we need to do one thing. Well, two things really. First things first, we need to tell it to actually put the widget on the screen. And the way we're going to do that is by pretty much just creating a widget. And then under the class, we're going to just set this to um, whatever we've just created for player health. So player health vignette. And then for return value, if we drag this out and pretty much just tell it to add it to the viewport and that will display it on the screen. So if I compile this, and if I go ahead and press play, it's not going to be doing anything at the moment. We've got the vignette effect and everything, but that's, but it's not, it's not being called and it's not being referenced. So what I need to do when the engine is actually taking away some of this player's health, we need to tell it to call that function. So what I need to do now then is I need to go into my fire obstacle, for example, and I need to tell it to do that. So if I go ahead and open up my fire obstacle, which is here. And then if I go into my script, um, by default, it should look at, it should look a little bit like this. If you're on the same video as I am, um, or you're up to date with the series and you've done every single video, it will look like this. So with our fire system, it was quite simple. What I did was when it began to overlap, it would take away some of the player's health and then it would just see whether or not the player's health is below zero and kill them if it is. What I need to do to actually get this vignette displayed on the screen, as soon as it takes away some of the player's health, I need to tell the engine to, you know, create this widget and call that function. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do, first things first, is pretty much I'm going to find my player health set node. So where I'm actually setting the player's health, everything after that, I need to move this over to the right a little bit to give me a little bit of space. And then between this, I need to cast to the side scroller character and then call that function. So from set player health, just drag this out and just type in cast to side scroller character. And then from side scroller character, if you drag it out from as side scroller character, type in damage player. And that is it. And that should give us our vignette effect and you guys need to make sure you link this up just in the same way as you did before so before we went from set and then to the branch we need to add in the cast to and the damage player between the branch try not to mix things up too much so if I hook that up and then one other thing is object wildcard once again for the player character you just drag it out and type in get player character and that is fine and hopefully this should work perfectly fine so if I go ahead and compile this, press play, it's not going to work because I've got some issues with my exploding rock where I've done the same thing just to show you sort of what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and delete these and put it back to normal and we then can see how it's working. So ignore the stuff that I've just done with this rock, we will redo that in a second. So compile it, press play. If we go ahead and jump into our fire now, so let's see if we can get over there. 
and if we get into our fire you can see it puts the vignette on the screen and it fades out quite nicely and if I go back in there again or if I stay in there it gets brighter and brighter and that is perfect. Now all we need to do is pretty much do the same thing for the exploding rock. It's pretty simple, find where we're taking away the player's health and then just add in this function from there. So we've done the fire, let's do the rock. So we open up the exploding rock and then we make this a little bit bigger and you can see I've moved everything a little bit already here. So all I need to do after set player health is cast to the side scroller character and then from the side scroller character, if I drag this out and type in damage player and then hook this up to the branch just like it was before, everything will work perfectly for us. So once again, object wildcard needs to be needs to be get player character, compile it, let's press play and hopefully everything looks really great. So run into the little explosion and that's perfect and it goes away and each time it hits me we are gonna get that vignette on the screen anyway guys hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video we can use this function pretty much any way you like whether it's damaging player from enemies obstacles anything you like thanks for watching guys stay awesome keep creating your boy vertus signing out